you doing this morning? Let's get up, let's praise, let's worship our living God this morning. He is an unstoppable God, powerful. This will be a glorious day for us all. Here we go. Heaven thunder in the world was born. Life begins and ends in the dust you fall. Faith commanded and the mountains moved. Fear is losing ground to our hope in you. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. Impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Freedom conquer, all our chains undone. Sin defeated, Jesus is overcome. Mercy triumphs when the third day dawns. And darkness was denied when the storm was gone. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. The impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Unstoppable God, let your glory go on and on. The impossible things in your name, they shall be done. Nothing shall be impossible. Your kingdom reigns unstoppable We'll shout your praise forevermore Jesus our God unstoppable Nothing shall be impossible Your kingdom reigns unstoppable We'll shout your praise forevermore Jesus our God unstoppable Nothing shall be impossible Your kingdom reigns unstoppable we shout your praise forevermore, Jesus our God unstoppable.
God's presence is here. God's presence is here. The Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. The Bible says that where two or more are gathered in his name, that he is in the midst of us. He is with us right now. Amen. Do you guys, and, and how many of you guys know that he's here? How many of you guys are experiencing that? He gives us his presence as a gift. Now, some of us, we came here with needs. Some of us, we've come here needing God to move in areas in our lives for the lives of those that we love. So this is the time in the service when we're going to pray for those needs. And we believe that God is going to meet those needs. Amen? So how many of you guys are here today? You need God to meet, you need God to meet a need. Stretch out your hand. Keep it up. All right, if you're here this morning, you got your hand raised, keep it high. Church, look around. Look at those that have their hands raised and gather around them and pray. Saints of God, children of God, go lay hands on your family. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Hallelujah. God, you are so good. You are amazing, Lord. Lord, I pray right now for the hands that are raised. God, I pray that you would move heaven and earth on their behalf. God, I pray for those, God, that are dealing with addiction, God, that you would set them free in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for those right now who are dealing with depression and anxiety, God. We pray for freedom. I pray for peace to come over them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for those that have loved ones, God, that are far away, God, that have ran from you. Lord, I pray that you would open their eyes. God, I pray that you would reveal to them the truth, God. I pray your Holy Spirit will not let them go. God, I pray for those that are sick, God. I pray for healing, God. We come against the flu that is hitting this church again. God, we come against these viruses in Jesus' name, God. We pray for wholeness. Lord, I pray for I pray for, for Bob, Bob Wick, who is battling cancer. God, cancer is under your feet, God, and we claim victory over cancer in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you would heal Bob in Jesus' name. God, I pray for those dealing with dementia. God, I pray that you would make their minds right again. God, I pray for power. I pray for wholeness, God. God, I pray for your majesty to be revealed in our lives. God, we thank you for who you are, Jesus. I pray for those struggling financially. I pray that you would give them opportunity and you give them wisdom. And Lord, I pray that you would just be, show yourself to be as faithful as you say you are. We know that's who you are. God, you are so good. This is the time in the service where we take communion. And if you haven't had a chance to grab the elements, they're at the table in the back. So we'll take that opportunity. As we were singing, as we were singing to the Lord, as we were, as we were singing to him, I was thinking, I was contemplating his name. And we just sung this song, What a Wonderful Name. You guys can sit if you, sit if you like. We just, we just sung this last song, and it is powerful. And it made me think about what the angel told, what the angel told Joseph. His name would be Emmanuel, God with us. Church, this is powerful. That God is not a stranger to you. That God is not distant to you. That God is with you. And the God that is with us, the, our God who created life, our God who created the universe, our God who, who put all these things in, into existence, he knows everything about you. Even the hairs on your head or the lack thereof on mine. He, ha, he, he knows these things. And he desires to be with us. He sets a table before us. 
So here's the point of the service where we take this opportunity to remember that, that he came to this earth to, 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 to pay the penalty for our sins and, and to show us what heaven is going to be like. He, we, we, we know that he foreshadows his coming, that, that great things are to come. We know that he's defeated death in this season of Christmas where we remember that he keeps his promises. So before we go further, let's take this opportunity to reflect on what he did for us. And if there's sin in your life, if you come here with a heavy heart and the Holy Spirit's dealing with you, take this opportunity to give it to him, to lay it at his feet. So let's, let's seek him for a moment. God, we as a congregation, we, we come before you. We, we are grateful for what you did on the cross. We're grateful that you keep your promises, God. Christmas is, we celebrate Christmas because you were promised to us in the all the way back to the garden, when they were, Adam and Eve were, let, were removed from the garden, you were promised then. But Lord, now we celebrate the fact that your promises are fulfilled. The promises that, are, that, that you've made that haven't been fulfilled, they will be, God. You are going to come back. You are going to set things right. Lord, I pray for, that you would forgive us of our unrighteousness. God, I pray if there's sin in our lives, God, that, that you would take it from us. Lord, that you would help us not to, not to go down that path, that you would lead us not into temptation but you, that you deliver us from evil in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. So it says this in Scripture. Oh, money flies when I've opened Bibles. That's crazy. It says this in the in book of Mark. It says, as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed, and he broke it and gave it to them, saying, take and eat it. This is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many. Church, let's, let's, let's partake of the bread together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your body that was broken for us. Thank you for your body that was broken on our behalf. Thank you that by your stripes we're healed. Thank you for that, Lord. Let's drink the fruit of the vine. Lord, thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. God, thank you that, that, you, that you made a way, God, for us to be forgiven. Thank you that you made a way. God, you are so good. You are so holy, God. Thank you for all that you've done. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go into the last song.
First Chronicles, I don't know if you can even see this right now. Woo. 29. Therefore David blessed the Lord before all the assembly. And David said, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power and the glory, the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you, and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to be 
to make great and to give strength to all. Now, therefore, our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. Lord, you are worthy of praise, glory, and honor, and that's what we do today. May everything, the rest of this service, Lord, be here to be glorified, to glorify you in Jesus' name. Praise you, God. You guys can have a seat. It was good. That was a good word. That was good scripture. That was powerful. Praise God. Guys, I just before I get to preaching, I just want to announce that next Sunday is Christmas Eve. Some of you are clapping because you're excited. Some of you realize you have to shop still. <laughs> How many of you guys have not started shopping yet? Come on, man. Be honest. You're done? You're done and wrapped. I am not wrapped. I hate wrapping. Usually I bribe Katrina to wrap for me. But that's not my announcement, okay? My announcement is this, is next Sunday, Christmas Eve, we're going to have one service. We're combining the two services on Christmas Eve. It's going to, and the children will be here as well. We're looking at about an hour-long service. It'll be at 1030 in the morning, a combined service, adult, children, second and first service, everybody in the same house. And the children will have, a very, will have a role in this service. It's going to be an awesome service. I'm excited about what God's going to do Christmas Eve. It's a great time to celebrate, isn't it? it I, what, you know what God's been dealing with me about, and this isn't my sermon, I'm just sharing my heart with you, is, is this year I'm really focusing on the fact that God keeps his promises. And, and when I celebrate Christmas, this is what I see. I see promises being kept. And, and that's how God's been dealing with me. And maybe God's been dealing with you differently this season. But to me, I see all the prophecies in the Old Testament that lead up to Jesus in his birth. And boom, you have God saying, I promised and I kept that promise. And you and I, some of you are hanging on to promises right now. And, and you, they haven't come to fruition. And it's hard to imagine how, but God keeps telling you, stay the course, stay the course. Let me tell you something. As you look at that Christmas tree, it's a reminder of the season, the season that God keeps promises. Amen? I think that's exciting. Yeah, someone's clapping. That's kind of cool. I feel like small talking to you. I don't mind going to preach. Just kidding, I will. I, I, I do a lot of research, and there's always this controversy about Christmas trees. Are they pagan or are they not pagan? And I may ruffle feathers with them, what I'm about to say. And, and, but I, I am a heavy researcher because I just don't take things at face value. I can't help it. Are you guys that way too? You don't always take things at face value? If, if, you, if I say something you're not sure about, go research it. Don't, don't just say Pastor Rob said. Don't be, don't be blind. You're allowed to have a, a different opinion. You're even allowed to call me and say, hey, my research led me somewhere else. But, but I, I, I tried, I tried, I tried to find a direct link between Christmas trees and German paganism. And guess what I couldn't find? In fact, we don't start seeing references to Christmas trees until the 1300s in, in Germany. And do you know why they did Christmas trees? At Christmas time, they would do plays out in the, in the public square to share the gospel. In these plays, they were, in England they called them passion plays, and in Germany I think they called them creation plays. And in these creation plays, because people were illiterate, they couldn't read, so they would share the story of Jesus through these plays, like, like, like a youth group doing, doing um, a human video to music back in the 90s. It's the same kind of concept. So a common theme that they would do every Christmas time was the Garden of Eden. They would show, they would have a, a, two trees. One tree would have a snake, or fake snake, and they would have Adam, Adam and Eve would be tempted, and Eve would eat, eat an apple from the, that tree, but the other tree would be the tree of life. And this was a common theme. And then from there, they will go on to share the need for Jesus, and then and salvation comes through the Lord. But I want you to think right now like, like you don't live in the air conditioning in a heated house. And I want you to imagine yourself walking through the woods in the wintertime. What do you see? What kind of trees do you see? You see death, don't you? There's no leaves on the tree. But what trees are green in the wintertime? Pine trees, evergreen trees. So to a, a, to, to a German Christian in the 1300s, they would look at this evergreen tree and they would see it as, as, as representative of the tree of life. Life where there is death, which is what Jesus does to us. He makes dead men alive. 
Now, to us, we see things differently because we don't think that way. But this is where that tradition comes from. It is a reminder that when all things are dead, Jesus comes and brings life. Amen? Now, you may see it different, and that's okay. If I ruffled feathers, I apologize. But I choose to look at it as representative of Jesus in the tree of life. So there I am. That's Pastor Rob. You guys ready for my sermon? All right. God, I pray you give me the words to say that you would speak through me today. And I pray for your fire in this house right now. I just, I pray right now for people that are, that need a touch from you, God, that they would experience you. I pray for the person who's here saying, God, why am I in this place in life right now? God, where are you? This was not part of the plan. God, I pray that you would speak to them and show them that you are there. God, I pray for the person that wonders where you're at. Some of you do, don't you? I pray they'd find you. And you would show them that you're never far away. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We'll talk today about the shepherds. I like the shepherds. You guys like the shepherds in the in the story? How many of you guys feel like you can relate to the shepherds? How many of you guys will want to be those shepherds? Well, here's the truth of the matter. If you lived in first century AD, you wouldn't want to be those shepherds. In fact, in fact it was not a it was not a job that she would brag about. And no mother would say, I'm so proud of my son. They went to college and they are now shepherds. They wouldn't do that. In fact, it was a very lowly job. It was a job that was looked down upon at a time where you had a rising middle class and you had trades that were happening. You had tradesmen. You had, you had an economy that, that was happening in this region. That was, that it, was, it wasn't weak. It was strong because of Rome. And, and then you had... You had a class of people that became shepherds, and they became shepherds out of necessity because they didn't have the skills to do the other jobs. Or maybe they were down on their luck. Or maybe they were next to homeless. It was, it was a class of people that was heavily looked down upon in first century A.D. In fact, the truth of the matter is, the shepherds were so looked down upon in those days, they looked at them as vagabonds, a vagrant, somebody that was that would rise the rails like a hobo from the 1930s. You could picture the shepherds singing Big Rock Candy Mountain, eating their beans from a can. I mean, this, this is who's hired as a shepherd because it's a low-skill labor, labor force, and they were not trusted. They were looked down upon so heavily. And the truth of the matter is, is that most people didn't aspire to become a shepherd. And if you were there, it's because you had to be there. All right? And the reality is that if, if you had to be there and that was a job, that the only thing that you could funnel to, to to provide food or a place to to live, even if you're outside in the elements, you still have a place to call yours, right, in a sense. You're, you're, it's not what you want. Like this is not the pinnacle of your life. And I ask you this, how many of you guys have ever been in a position in your life where you were not where you wanted to be? Okay, so like six of you are honest. Or the rest of you don't have high aspirations, right? You know, I, I can remember, I remember a season in my life that, that we, were, we were so hard up. We were so hungry. We, were, we had just had Bobby. And, and we, were, we, had, we, had, we had lost our job. And we moved back in with my parents. And we thought it would be three weeks. Three weeks turned into six years. All right. It, it, and and, and it, it, it was emasculating. It was humiliating. And it was, a t- it was a time where the economy was tough where we were at, and, and, we, and we, we were just stuck. And I was so discouraged. And I, I don't know if you've ever been that way, but I, I was so discouraged. And, and I found a job. I had a, I had a pickup truck, and I made money moving, moving rocks. In fact, sculptor, sculptures, to be exact. So I made a living, and it wasn't really a living, but I made some money because there was, there was a lot of people that were wealth that, that lived in my community, and when they retired, they would, they would pay to join these, these studios, and they would learn how to sculpt, and I made money delivering their sculpture and install, installing it in their homes. Well, I need, I need to pick up extra money from the same studio. They hired me for the amazing, amazing salary of $8 an hour to carve, to carve marble. So for eight dollars an hour, I'm carving marble with marble dust everywhere. I'm working this marble, and and I and I didn't, I didn't want to do it. I could actually do it. Oddly enough, I'm, I was actually really good at it, but I I don't ever want to do it again. I didn't want to do this the whole time. I'm carving this marble and I'm crying out to God, 
And I'm saying, God, why have you forgotten about me? And I remember this one day that I was carving, I was carving this stone, and, and someone, someone had, they were, someone wanted me to, what, what would happen is these people, they, they would have a vision for art, but they, they couldn't do it. They thought they could. Then I would come in there and I would make it look good. Or I would actually carve the image that they're trying to make, and then they would put their name on it, you know. And, or they would ruin it first, but, it, but I'm, I'm carving this, and I'm carving this thing, and of all the stones I'm carving that day, it was alabaster. And, and, and I'm, I'm carving them, and I'm crying out to God, God, why am I here? I'm covered in dust. I, 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 I'm, I'm filthy. I'm itchy. It, it's disgusting. And, and I don't want to do this. It's hot outside. And, and I'm in this warehouse that air. It's just gross. And God, why did you forget about me? I've got a child I have to take care of. Lisa's pregnant with her next child. I can't even afford formula. And I'm carving this. And then the Holy Spirit reminds me of, of the woman who, who took the, the alabaster jar filled with perfume. And he broke, she broke it over, over his head. No, she, she, she opened it up over his head and, and, and the perfume poured out and she, and she cried and she washed his feet. And he, he says, the Lord says, I'm shaping you. The way you're shaping this stone, I'm shaping you in this season. You don't want to be in this season, but you need to be in this season because I'm developing you. And, and, and it was in that moment that, that I felt like God had been silent. I felt like God had been forgotten all about me and he breaks me in the middle of this studio and I had a moment with God and people were looking at me like what is wrong with this weirdo and 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 the Lord was saying I haven't forgotten about you I'm shaping you and I think about the men that became shepherds and and how no one aspired to it and it's not it doesn't mean that there's something wrong with them but some of these guys may have been in a season in their life where that's the best they could find that's the best they can do but you want to know something it's not an accident that they were present the night that the angels appeared it's not an accident that they were present the, that night so let's talk about this why don't you guys open your Bibles with me And it, we're going to be in Luke chapter 2, verse 8 through 20. That night, there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. Just pause. Can you imagine this? Imagine who they are. All right. Imagine this is the most, it, it is the middle of the night. They're probably around a fire trying to keep warm. Their, their very presence is keeping predators away. And, and it's mundane. It is nothing special about this to them. They don't know what day this is. They don't know what just happened. I mean, who knows what the conversations were about. It was as boring and mundane as you could get. And suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them. And the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. Suddenly... The angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the, in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those to with whom God is pleased. Then when the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the, to the village, and they found Mary and Joseph. And there was a, the baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this, this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things to her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had see, heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. 
God, thanks for your word. Thanks for your scripture, God. Thank you that these events are real. God, thank you that, that we have an account of these events. And Lord, I pray you speak to us about it in Jesus' name. It's an interesting thing that's going on here. We talked last week about all the things that happened at Bethlehem. And there's something that I brushed on that, 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 that I don't know if some of you picked up on. I think I made it a stronger point in the second service, but I brushed on this fact, is that these fields, the fields where the flocks were, this is where the sheep that were, were raised. This is where the lambs were raised to be sacrificed in the temple. This was not an, an ordinary flock of sheep. This was a significant thing. That meant that these shepherds, no matter where they were at in life, no matter what their attitude was that day, they, they had a very important job. They may not recognize the value of that job. They may not have understood the level of it, but their job was very significant in the fact that their job was to, to raise and, and to husband the sheep that would one day be sacrificed at the temple. This is a very significant thing for their job. It, it, they follow a tradition that goes all the way back to that goes all the way back to David, who was a shepherd in the same fields, a shepherd in the same community, who Jesus is now. We know that Jesus is descended from. And I imagine these shepherds, and they're, 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 they're in the field, and they're in a significant place that matters, and they're, the sheep are gathered around in a safe place, and their job is to watch them and, and, and read them and bring peace to these animals in the middle of the night and be there to ward off predators. So, so I, I, the fire must have, been, must have been warm. It must have been a place of gathering. And, and as they're around that fire, I, I could imagine the conversations. How many of you guys like bonfires? Or fires. Maybe I shouldn't say bonfire. But I mean, you guys like fires, don't you? How many of you guys are using your fireplace? We're using ours. Man, Isla, Isla is all about the fireplace. It is so cute. If I, when I light a fire in the fireplace, I, get, I have to brag. I'm very proud of myself. Um, we have a wood-burning fireplace. We cut the gas off. It was giving us trouble, but it's, we, we were using wood. So every fire I put in this season, which has been about 10 of them, I've not used a single match, and I haven't used any kerosene. I've just been using a ferro rod and a knife. And so I'm very proud of myself. My fire skills are getting better. But I love being the dad. Like, I love being the man, you know, you know taking care of my kids. I love that, that Isla's like... You know, she's pulling me to the fireplace because she wants a fire that night. So I, I, I light a fire in the fireplace, and Isla will get into her. She has a little little chair, a Scooby-Doo chair that's soft-backed, and she drags it in front of the fireplace, and she'll just sit there and stare at the fire. There's something magical about that. There's something special about those moments, and I can picture these men. You don't outgrow this. I mean, this is the television of the first century, right? They're on their phones. There's no YouTube. There's a fire. And, and they're looking at this fire, and they're telling stories. And I could imagine what the talk was like. Because, because if, you, if you were Jewish, and, and you understood the promises of God, and you understood the significance of that flock, that you would, have, you, would have, you would have told generations. For generations, you would have been told or have told the story of the fall of man, and that God was sending the Messiah to make things right. You would have known that these sheep, the lambs that you're watching, that their job was to, was to pay for the penalty of sins, and that one day the Messiah would do that. These things are being told. And in the mundane, in the ordinary, in, in, in the midst of, of what is insignificant, something special happens. God shows up. But what's wild about it to me is God was always there. It's not like God came down from heaven and walked in. In fact, it wasn't God himself. He sent an angel. But I love the language that's used. It's not that an angel arrived. It said that an angel suddenly appeared. It appeared. It was there and it wasn't. And I like to think that the angel was always there, but they weren't always able to see him. And, I, and the reason I like to think that is because there are so many times in my life where I've cried out to God and I said, God, where are you? And all the while, God was there. I just couldn't see him. And some of you right now, you may be in that place where you're, you're questioning a lot of things and your heart's cry, your yearn is, God, where are you? God, why have you forgotten? Church, listen to me. He keeps his promises. He never forgets. He is there right now. He has not forgotten about you. They appear and they become afraid because unlike the tree toppers that we like to use, angels were not pretty ladies. 
And he, he tells them, that he gives the message. I, he says, be at peace. Don't be afraid. I have come to give you a message that will be, bring joy to all of creation, to all of humanity. That the Christ, the Messiah is born. He's in Bethlehem. You will know him because he is in the manger and he is wrapped in, in tight cloth, clothing. They would have recognized this because the mangers were what they used. It was, it was part of their daily life. It, it, was, it was in their wheelhouse more than it would have been for Mary and Joseph. And then what I love, what happens next is it's as if the light switch turns on. And what was a dark night except for the fire, that fire, in my mind at least, that fire is now insignificant compared to the glory of God that surrounds them. Because as they look up, it's not just one angel, there's an army of angels. Now when I was a kid, it was always the host of heaven, and I pictured a butler. You know, the t like, a, like a, what do you call it, a tea towel? You know, I, I don't know why. It was fancy. A host, right? You're going to be a good host. You know, a tuxedo maybe with a, with a little flat back here. You know, like you were at a wedding. That's what I pictured. It's very dainty, right? It's not dainty. It's an army of heaven. All right? You have a force capable of wiping out creation. You have a military force that, that we, could, we, we would not stand against today in 2023. We could do nothing against the army of heaven. And in front of them, instantly, the army of heaven is there. They are surrounded. And for this moment, you have, you have the, the kingdom of God and you have the kingdom of man converging in the same space. In a moment that was once mundane has now become sacred because they are now aware of the presence of God. And I want to challenge you today, if you're stuck in the mundane, if you're stuck in the ordinary, know this, that God's presence is with you. All right, you are not alone. You are not alone. My prayer is that God opens your eyes. Just like when, when the prophet of God was surrounded at Dothan, and, and, and his servant went out to fetch water, and he goes to the well to, to get the water, and he sees this army surrounding about to wipe out the city of Dothan. And he runs inside, and he says, wake up, wake up, master, wake up. And, he sa and the master, he wakes up, he says, what's wrong? Let me sleep in. He says, we're about to die. The armies are surrounding us, and we're about to die. And he says, God opened his eyes. Let him see there are more with us than are against us. And he walks out, and he sees an army even greater than the army that's surrounding him. It's the army of God. And the army of God invades, and he strikes blindness on the enemy force. Church, listen to me. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He's greater than our depression. He's greater than our fear. He is greater than our doubt. He is greater than our addiction. He is greater than our past. He is greater than the way you see yourself. He is greater than our circumstances. He is greater than our moment. And he is with you now whether you see him or not. Instantly, poof! They're there. And now this moment, this space is being shared, not just by shepherds, but now by angels, by an army of God. And they, they honor God. The, the, two, the, two, the two types of creation, man and angel, they cry out to God and they sing praises to God because the promise is being kept. And then, and then as quickly as they arrived, they, they, they left. And what do you do after a moment like that? I mean, what do you do after you experience God? Because they're left with the option. They can, hey, that's cool. Let's go to bed. Hey, that doesn't happen to everybody. That was enough. You know, it, it would be like experiencing God and saying, well, that's all I need. Have we ever done that before? You cry out to God, you're in a worship service, and the presence of God is tangible. That the, the space between you and him is so thin. And, and, and yet God wants us to even go deeper than that. But, but we're satisfied with that. Like some of us become a little bit afraid. Because there's this feeling of unknown. There, there's something different that occurs, right? There, there's something about following God when God shows up in our lives that, that sometimes evoke, either can invoke curiosity or invoke fear. And, I, and the shepherds, they had a choice. They were given a choice. They could have, they could have gone back to their normal job and be, been who they were all the time. Having had that experience under their belt, they could have bragged about it for the rest of their lives. And that would have been great. 
But they chose to do something different. They chose to go further down the road. They chose to do something, to do something with that experience. They chose to investigate God. They chose to seek Him. They chose to, to understand Him more, to find His promises, to not just go as far as the experience, but to take it to something deeper in their life. So what do they do? Hey, I know we're supposed to watch sheep, but I'm pretty sure those angels scared away every predator from here to Capernaum. I think that's far. I don't know. Let's go. Let's go see this thing they're talking about. Let's go see for ourselves. Let's investigate. Let's see what God's doing. So they go and they arrive and they get into, they find, they know exactly where to go because they understand where this, where this manger is because remember, the sacrificial lambs are kept there. They know exactly where to go. And when they get to this place, they begin to worship him because they recognize who he is. And, they, and, they, and they, they're bubbly. They can't contain themselves. I and mean, they had an experience that, that most people have never had. And they begin to tell Mary and Joseph what they just experienced. The Bible says something interesting that, that speaks to me all the time. Is that Mary absorbed these things. He, she kept these things close to her heart. She thought about them often. She took their experience, and their experience confirmed what God had been doing in her life. And I would imagine that, that news, Bobby's world. In Bobby's world, that news would have given her peace, some peace, at the, during the anguish of the cross. Bobby's world. This is a powerful thing. And as I prepared for this, and as I prayed through this weeks ago, what the Lord kept telling me to tell you is He knows where you're at. For some of you, He knows your cry. He knows you, some of you, that you've been faithful. I'm not questioning your faithfulness. But in the midst of your faithfulness, you still cried out to Him, God, where are you? God, when? God, when? God, where are you? God is here. Church, God has not forgotten. In the midst of your mundane, in the, midst of, 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 in the midst of things not going the way you want it to go, He is still there with you. So if you're here today and, and this speaks to you, or you think it might speak to you at a different stage in your life, I want you to write this stuff down. Because here's a couple of takeaways. That these are things that, 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 that I, I, you need to remember. These are things that are valuable to you as you journey through life, as you walk with the Lord. Because let me tell you something. You might be in a place right now where it's, I, you can't relate to the shepherds. Like conceptually you can, but you can't hear. But listen to me. There will be a season where you can. There will be a season where you, you, you cry out and say, God, I need you. And you may wonder why he's silent. These are the words that give peace. The first thing is this. God is always near. Remember this, that God is always near. I mean, think about his name. Think about the name that is given to him. We say Jesus. Jesus is the English way of saying the Aramaic of Jesus. And Jesus was, was the Aramaic way of saying Emmanuel, God with us. This is, this is his very name. His very name means that he's with us, that, that, that God was once distant, but now God is near that, that he is the friend that sticks closer than a brother, that he does not forget about his people. This is the hope of Jesus. This is what he does for us. Is that you and I, our ancestor, our, our shared ancestor Adam was expelled from the garden. That Adam and God walked together. They were together, but now they're separate. That, that mankind could not get near God. When the Jewish people were in the wilderness, they, they were told they couldn't touch the holy mountain that God was in. They couldn't touch the ark with their hands. They couldn't do these things because God was there. We're here. But now because of Jesus, because God, because his very name is God with us. This is what he does. He bridges the gap. And he does it through his cross. He does, he, he does it that he pays the price for our sins, that he, that he, he wears, he wears, he, he, excuse me, he, he takes our dirty clothes and he puts on his clean clothes. You ever, you ever, you ever had your clothes get messed up before you had to be around important people or an important meeting? I remember I was at a meeting once and my zipper broke. And, um, and I couldn't escape the meeting. 
And, and, and I was, it was in Florida. It was a, a minister's meeting, and our superintendent knew my zipper broke. So he kept asking me to stand up and address the people. <laughs> and he had a good laugh about it later at my expense. I felt about that tall. Right? And that's humorous. I mean, that's, see, we've all been there, right? <laughs> we've all been there. <laughs> but, but listen to me. You and I know that, that when we stand before God, and we stand before God in the filth of our sin, that we recognize that our clothes are dirty. And no matter how much I wash and clean, I can't make myself clean and clean enough to be near him. But yet God, God makes us clean. That God chooses to give us garments that are clean so that we can stand in his presence. God with us. The angels didn't just arrive. They didn't say the angel arrived and the others arrived. The angel appeared as an apparition. It, the angel was there. They just couldn't see it. The armies of heaven were already there. How many angels are surrounding you right now? In your loneliness and your grief and, and how, how, how many hosts of heaven, you know, how many angels, the armies of heaven surround you? You're his people. You are his most prized possession. He, pray, he paid for you in the most expensive and lavish way. You think he's not going to defend you with his angels. You matter to him. And, and not just his angels, his Holy Spirit. The Bible says you're the temple. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. If you've come to the Lord and you've asked Jesus into your life and you became his kid, you now house the Holy Spirit. Is that God is always near, even if you don't feel him. It's not about what I feel. But the reality never changes. Right? Number two is God gives joy to his people. And, and I understand that for some of us, Christmas is full of joy. And there's, there, there, it's, it's beautiful. But others, it's full of pain. It's a season. It's the suicide rates go through the roof during Christmas time. December 26th is the number one day in the Western world for somebody to die. That means, that means in the holiday season, more people grieve over lost loved ones because their family died this time of year. It's, it's the reality of it. It's just the reality of it. And, and in the middle of this is that God can still give joy in the midst of the hurt. I, I, God can bring joy in the midst of anxiety. God can bring joy in the midst of depression. God can bring joy where it doesn't even make sense. Joy is, joy is different than happiness. Happiness comes and goes. Joy is something, it's like a low gear in a Jeep. It'll get you there. It's something powerful. It, 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 it's, it's stronger than a fleeting emotion. And it comes from the fact that you and I know that he keeps his promises. No matter where our status is right now, you and I know that where we are today is not where we're going to end up. You and I know that he comes back and makes things right. And those voices that were silenced because they passed, you and I get to hear them again. I look forward to hearing my mom and my dad again. I look forward to that. For us, Christmas is a weird time. It's full of joy, but it's full of tears. Lisa's mother passed two days after Christmas. And my father passed 11 days after that. So for us, it's a time that is, that is full of joy, but it's also a time that's full of, of pain and memory. But yet, here is God. He brings joy. How do we know this? Because the angels, they appear. They said, don't be afraid. Have joy. The news I give you is going to bring joy to all of creation. It's bigger than our circumstances. The news of Jesus is bigger than all this stuff. The next thing is this, the final thing. The first was God is always near. The second is God gives joy to his people. The third is this, God is worth discovering. God is worth discovering. Now, I know you're probably saying, okay, Captain Obvious, we all follow Jesus. We're the early service. We're the saints. <laughs> well, hear me out on this. The angels didn't have to introduce themselves to the shepherds. Shepherds knew who they were. Okay? Now, they said they, they introduced their intentions, but they didn't. They, they, the shepherds knew. They know who God is. They're, 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 God's honoring a promise to, to, to David, and part of that promise is to honor the shepherds, who David was a shepherd. I mean, this is, there, there's no stranger here. We, we, we know what the shepherds were doing. They were keeping lambs that were going to be used for the temple. They understand these things. But yet, there's always something more about God to discover. 
It, there was, God, God, the relationship with God is like a relationship with your husband or wife. There's always something new that you're learning. There's always something new to discover. And here's what's wild is they were given the option, and I hit on this earlier. They were given the option to say, hey, this experience was enough. This is enough to, to fill 10 lifetimes. So I'm, gonna, I'm satisfied. I don't want to be greedy or emotional. I'm, I'm just going to accept it for what it is. In fact, maybe I'll just review this for the rest of my life and keep studying this. Or they could see for themselves and go deeper. And church, I want to challenge you as you go into 2024, seek God in a deeper way. And I'm not, I'm not questioning the level that you, or your understanding of God. I'm not questioning the level of your relationship. I'm just saying take it a step further. Because God has things in your life that, that are ready for you to discover. Let me tell you something. As you discover more of who God is, as your relationship goes deeper with God, as you, as you test that relationship by, by, by being more faithful, by, by taking risks, by doing things that are hard, that are foolish. I mean, think about it. How many of you guys like to go to the hospital and visit someone who just had a baby? Have you ever done that before without asking? Now, I don't know about you, but, but one of the questions they ask us in the hospital when we've had our babies was, so who do you want, in, who do you want to come in here? Because we could be mean and keep them away. <laughs> it's risky. This is a sacred moment. This is a personal moment. And these shepherds say, you know what? It, this moment's for everybody. It's not just for, the, for mommy and daddy. Right? They say, we're going to go see the good thing that God has done. And church, I want to challenge you to, to push it. To go deeper. To, tr to try new things. For some of you, it is trusting God with your finances in ways you haven't before. Right? It's about taking God off. It's about taking money off the, the, the throne in our life. For some of you, it's going to be about relationships with people that, that, that aren't your kind of people. But yet, they're made in the image of God, and God's challenging you to do that. For some of you, for some of you, it's being obedient in areas that He's been laying on your heart, but you keep saying, I'm not enough. I'm not enough. I'm not good enough. But God keeps saying, go, 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 go. Part of discovering Him is the obedience. And as you go into areas that are too big for you, as you go and do things that are too hard for you, it's there that we learn to depend on God, and we learn more about the character of God. So let 2024 be a year that you and I, we experience God in the mundane, that we're aware that He is here, and we choose to meet Him at a different level. So we pray. God, you are so good. We thank you for who you are, Lord. We thank you for your goodness, God. God, I pray right now that you would move in this house. God, I know right now you are laying on people's lives that you are telling them to take you deeper, to, 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 to pursue you, to discover you, to investigate you. Lord, I pray right now you begin to tell people how. Some of you right now, God's speaking to you. God's, God's challenging you in something. You need, you need to obey. You need to obey in those areas. Because of their obedience, Mary was blessed. She had information. She, had, she heard the testimony of the angels, and she carried that with her the rest of her life. Your obedience will bless others. Some of you, you're, you're here right now and you're, you, are, you can relate to the shepherds. You're not where you feel like you need to be. And your heart's cry is, God, are you in this? God, are you there? So Lord, I pray for those that are not where they feel like they should be. I pray for those who are crying out to you saying, God, are you in this? God, are you there? Lord, I pray that you would reveal yourself, that you would show yourself to your people in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I pray for those, God, that those that, that, that are, you're challenging, I pray that they would be obedient. So I'm not going to call you forward. I, I just, I'm going to pray for you at your seats. But if you're here today and God's challenging you, just slip up your hand to acknowledge it. Is God challenging you? Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. If you're here today and you need to know that God's there, there's no shame in that. Slip up your hand and I'll pray for you. I'm not going to call you up. All right. Thank you. God, I pray for the hands that were raised. I pray that you would speak, that you would reveal yourself, 
that you would show them that you're there, that they would, that they would, that they would experience you in all ways. And God, I pray that you would take us deeper, that we would not be afraid to discover more about you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Guys, I love you. If Scott comes forward to close out the service, I just want to tell you that I love being your pastor. I'm honored to be your pastor and your friend. And, and if you like what God is doing in your life, how many of you guys like what God's doing in your life? All right, bring a friend next week. All right, because because they, they deserve what you've got. I love you guys. I'll see you next week. Praise God. Wasn't that a great message? God's always with us. When he's not, he's still with us. But we may not be doing what we're supposed to. So where did we leave him? He don't leave us. So... Uh, visitors, if you're a new or returning guest, fill out a connection card and give it to the person in the back for a gift. Offering, um, you can give it four different ways. You can do it in person, in the back, uh, at My Church Loves You, or through bill pay, or just mail in a check to 64 Holder Road. Uh, always remember, God loves a cheerful giver, and uh, you can't outgive him, I guarantee that, and his word guarantees that, and uh, you know, bring in your first fruits to him. Uh, Christmas Eve service, as the pastor was saying earlier, next, uh, next week, one service, 1030, be here, bring a friend, and starting... On Thursdays at 10 a.m. in January, the DFA senior adult will be meeting uh, on Thursdays during that. So as we close and pray, thank you for being here today. And let's pray. Father God, we love you, Lord. We just thank you for always being with us, Lord. Lord, just guiding us, directing our footsteps, helping us just to have that personal relationship with you, Lord. Just keep drawing us, Lord. Bless us in every area, Lord, whether it's spiritually, financially, Lord. Lord, just let us always trust you. Lord, there's many things that come against us day in and day out, Lord, but you already know what comes, Lord. You won't let anything come against us that we can't be overcomers uh, to, Lord, and we just thank you for it. We thank you for your word this morning. We thank you for the obedience of the pastor, Lord, of bringing forth it. Lord, just go before us this week. Bless us, Lord, and we just give you the praise and glory in your name. Amen.